I want to talk about a nation that right now is collapsing. Nicaragua is going to hell right in front of our very eyes. Nicaragua is socialist. It's run by Daniel Ortega, a socialist. This is his second time around. We did a segment a couple of weeks ago on the nightmare of what's going on in Nicaragua since Ortega reclaimed power. He was voted back in. It's the same story that happens every single time a nation turns to a socialist. The economy goes to hell. Because socialism doesn't work. The public gets frustrated. So the socialist government, to try to maintain power, begins to strip away rights and snap, crack down on dissent. Everywhere you look, where Marxism has gotten in place as a governing philosophy, this is what happens. In some cases, the repression is brutal. Soviet Union and what happened in the Eastern Bloc. In other cases, it's milder. And the socialists are voted out of power and things are fixed. The welfare state right, comes back 20 years later, comes back in and so on. So there's different levels of the repression. What happened in Cuba is the same thing that's happened in Venezuela. Socialism, Marxism was put in place. It failed. In order to keep power, despite the fact that the economy was terrible, Rights were repressed. It is amazing it could fail in Venezuela with all the oil that they have. Once we started to frack here in the United States and the price of oil went down, Venezuela wasn't able to count on the, its nationalized oil market to carry all of the other weaknesses inherent in socialism. So Chavez came in and started killing people, locking people up. There was a civil war that was in place. Venezuela remains a nightmare to this day. It doesn't have to be that way. It's right next to Colombia, which is doing just fine, relatively speaking, at least. So now in Nicaragua, Ortega comes in. He imposes Marxism. Things are falling apart. There are food shortages. The unemployment rate has gone up. The economy isn't functioning anymore. So Ortega is cracking down. He's at almost the open warfare with the Catholic Church in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is an extremely Roman Catholic country. I think the numbers are better than 95%. The church has refused to be silenced. Ortega and his goons, and he's using now paramilitary outfits. What does that mean? Not officially government, but goon squads that are functioning as a military. They're firing on churches. Now the report today. Managua and other cities in Nicaragua right now Gunfire all over the place, paramilitary organizations firing at private homes. Homes belonging to people that are trying to raise their voices of opposition to what's going on in their country. They're now shooting at them. For all the ranting and raving that the left does about Donald Trump being a fascist and Donald Trump is going to take away our rights, he didn't take away anybody's rights because our country's economy is doing just great. He doesn't need to do it. The only people being abused are the, are, are the, are the Trump employees that are being harassed by liberals. You take a look at the nations that have turned to Marxism, look at the opposite occur. Marxist nations always become repressive and brutal because Marxism doesn't work. It is remarkable that the Democratic Party is turning now, after years and years and years, of denying that it was socialist, to open embrace of socialism and is making about socialists, they call themselves democratic socialists, like Bernie Sanders and Ocasio from New York, and turning them into the new heroes of the party. You wonder, how could this happen, given the fact that socialism fails everywhere, and the extreme form of socialism, Marxism, always leads to crackdown and borderline dictatorship, if not outright dictatorship. Well, the reason for that, of course, is that a lot of people don't know that socialism never works because no one tells them this. It's not like if you go to a university, you know, a high school economics class, the teacher's going to get up there and explain that socialism never works. 
It's hard to imagine being somebody as old as Bernie Sanders still thinking that this stuff's a good idea. Everything's for free. We'll just tax everybody to death and think it's going to work, given the fact that Sanders has had about 80 years now to observe the world and realize it never works. The only thing that works is just the opposite. The only way that you can support services to the public is if you have a booming economy, and that requires capitalism, profit, and wealth. So why do things always turn to repression in countries like Nicaragua? Why is Ortega being forced again to bring out the goon squad and shoot on people? Because people stop working and they stop producing when they can't keep what they, work, what they earn and produce. When you try to create a, a welfare state so great that the handful that are producing have to turn over almost all to the government, they stop producing. And when they stop producing, now there's no money to provide the welfare state and keep it going, and the economy starts grinding to a halt. The stores are empty, there's no food, there's no nothing. This is what happened in Venezuela, and it's now happening in Nicaragua. The public gets very, very upset. They talk about a new government, they talk about new power. The regime that's in place, the socialist regime, they want to keep power, thus the repression begins. The repression begins by shutting down free speech. You're really similar to what's happening in the United States on American college campuses and elsewhere. Try to shut everybody up. Then don't allow any rallies in the street. Lock up a few political opposition leaders. Figuring if people don't hear the other side, they can't accept the other side. When that doesn't work, when people are determined to speak anyway, and it's harder to shut people down now, what with the Internet, when you have a Catholic church down in Nicaragua that remains independent and so on, now you start shooting and you do it at gunpoint. The Catholic Church was made virtually illegal by Castro all of those years because he couldn't abide dissent because he didn't want the other side put out. Same thing in Venezuela and now the same thing in Nicaragua. You would think if ever there was an idea that has that would be discredited by now, it would be socialism. You would think that. Yet the Democrats are embracing it more than ever, and you've got a generation, the millennials, that are falling in love with it. How many more times does socialism have to fail? How many more times does Marxism have to turn to murdering its own citizens for people to realize that this is an economic philosophy that cannot ever work? It's really simple to explain. Explaining the difference between capitalism and socialism and socialism and capitalism and socialist Marxism is real, real simple. Capitalism at its most extreme encourages people to make as much money as possible and lets them keep as much of it as we can. That's at its most extreme. Socialism at its most extreme has government taking over the means of production, taxing wealth at rates that are as high as you can possibly get away with, and giving the people as many things as they can for free. Ocasio Perez in New York, Bernie Sanders, they're talking about free health care, free university this, free tuition, free this, free that, free the other thing. Well, of course, that all sounds great. Who wouldn't want all this free stuff? The problem, of course, is that there's no way to create an economic system in which you can pay for it. Because when all of this stuff is free, it means somebody else is providing the free. And they have to be taxed at extremely high rates in order to support that welfare state. And when they are taxed at those extremely high rates, they stop producing. A, what's the, what's the point of doing all of this if we don't get to keep any of it? And B, engaging in economic activity takes great risk. Why risk everything for a business that might fail if I don't get to keep my money? And the big thing that's changed now in the world now, capital is mobile. Businessman in Nicaragua, well, I'll just go do it in Honduras. But they let me keep some of my money. Or maybe I'll do it in Costa Rica where I can keep even more. Here's what's going to happen. As sure as I'm sitting here, we're going to get a new refugee crisis at the American border. People are going to leave Nicaragua and try to get into Mexico and then come north of the United States. The country is going to devolve into all-out civil war if, if Ortega isn't overthrown by his military. It happens again and again and again and again and again. When Castro and the Cubans came in, a refugee crisis began that really never ended. People would get on the boats and try to come into the United States, try to come somewhere. 
Ortega trying to keep power is going to start nationalizing everything and take away people's homes, wealth, business, everything. It's the way it always plays out. Why were there bread lines everywhere from Siberia to East Germany when the Soviet Union was in power? Because the economic system doesn't work. Nothing was produced. Why were there gulags everywhere that the Soviet bloc existed? Because you had to shut down any type of free speech in order to maintain power because your economic system was not working. It never works. Now, this is the point at which some lefties are pointing out, well, communism works. Communism is not Communism in China is not Marxist. The Chinese moved in the 70s and the 80s to a different form of communism, in which they encouraged the development of, if not a free market, a private sector market. You can get rich in China. They let some people get rich. They allow people to start their own businesses. The government doesn't control all of the means of production over there. They have private businesses. They're huge. What they kept was the repression and state control of your life. And you can only have this many kids and you can't go speak up and criticize. But they allowed the economy to be premised on a form of capitalism. Socialist Marxism is sees capitalism as the opposite. It's the anathema. It's the thing that they want to get away from. So they gravitate toward an economic philosophy that, that will obviously never, ever, ever work. In talking over the years to people on subjects like this, many conservatives get frustrated that you win the argument and you can't win the argument. In other words, we've had test cases around the world. Capitalism, socialism, Marxism, everything in between. We see what works and we see what doesn't work. In modern times, the most capitalist system that we've had anywhere on the planet has been the one here in the United States. What a surprise. We became the world's greatest economic superpower. What a surprise. How do you lefties think that happened? You look at Europe. The economies that are the most fouled up are the ones that are the most socialist. Find the countries where you can get away with work at the least and the government paid for the most. That's the ones that ended up with massive amount of debt that had to be bailed out by everybody else. This stuff is actually pretty simple. You can go around the planet. The freer the economy is, the more premised it is on capitalism, the likelier it is that the country is thriving. The more Marxist the, con the economy is, the more it's controlled by the state, the more wealth is concentrated only in the hands of the small and tidy and powerful, who steal from everybody else, the more it doesn't work. Here's the thing that makes this so precious and so rich. The socialists, the Marxists, they claim that they're out for the little guy. We're going to take care of the little guy. We're going to take care of the little guy. That's their big lie. It's how they come into power everywhere. Yet there is no form of economics in which the little guy suffers more than socialism. The little guy always gets the shortest end of the stick. He's the one that can't even get bread. He's the one that has to put up with the rationing. And he's the one that gets shot and killed if he tries to speak up and say, hey, this isn't working. Yet the left remains just in love with it. People running around with their stupid Che Guevara motorcycle t-shirts on, admiring Castro, the contemporary conman snake oil salesman Bernie Sanders. Here in the United States, we've been able to abide these socialists because we've never really given them full power. The closest thing we ever got to a socialist president in contemporary times was Obama. But there was a limit as to how far we let him go. He didn't ever actually nationalize anything. He did take over health care. But you can go run around like Bernie Sanders and say, free this, free that, and free the other thing, because we still have enough capitalism to pay for it. But when we unleash capitalism, that's when we do our best. Lower tax rates and the regulatory state, here we go, here we go, booming. 
If you can pass the drug test and you show up right now, you've got a job in the United States of America. It may not be your job of choice, but we've got the reason we're able to absorb all these illegal immigrants and their jobs is we don't have enough people to do all the work that we have. That's how we boom. Look where a lot of the refugees come from. Socialist repressive nations. Be very wary of the person who says he's looking out for the little guy. Because when they get power, it is the little guy that suffers the most. And therefore becomes subjected to the mind control and thought control, thought, thought control and denial of individual liberties and rights that is necessary in order for despots and failing economies to keep their power. One quick point before I go to the break. Socialism and Marxism can hang on longer than most if they have rich natural resources they can export. Russia had that. Venezuela had that. They followed it up because the price of oil went down, but they still have it. When you don't even have any of that, you got nothing. Nothing. The ingenuity of the average entrepreneur who decides to put a little bit of capital at risk and come up with a good idea so he can get really, really rich and then hire a lot of people, that can't happen. In countries like the ones run by that goon Daniel Ortega. You sometimes see religious leaders that cry capitalism and talk about a more egalitarian economic philosophy. They put it in theological terms. They're just people who are mis... They just haven't figured it out is all. It's not like God is socialist. God doesn't want everybody to be poor. God doesn't want people to suffer. God doesn't want Daniel Ortega to walk up to your doorstop and with a bunch of paramilitary people and shoot you because you told your neighbor that you don't think your economy is doing well. It's well-intentioned, and that's the thing about Marxism. Oh, it's well-intentioned. We're going to take care of everybody. It just doesn't work. And the evidence has been in. It's been tested again and again and again and again and again. I don't recall that I did the segment, but I bet I probably said it. When Ortega came back into power in Nicaragua, I bet I probably said it. You know what? It's going to fall apart on him just like it did the last time. I can't say I recall doing the segment because if I did, remember the time I'd make Paul go find the tape so I could play it and say, I told you so. But it's the safest prediction in the world. I know I said it when Chavez came in and started nationalizing everything in Venezuela. Some of the countries where it's been tried, like, say, Brazil, the good thing there is they never give them, a, they give them all that much time to hang on, and you can generally throw them out of power. You fix the country again, only the socialists come back in, break it again, they get thrown out, and they fix it again. Unfortunately, these countries that, are, that become dictatorships, when they start repressing individual rights, it's not as easy to overthrow or replace them. Take a look, for example, at Cuba. Look what it took for the Soviet Union to fall. They literally had to bankrupt themselves and give up the ghost.